Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, as always, uh, we'll start with some housekeeping items. Please keep yourself on mute. Uh, if you don't mind, add your affiliation next to your name on the Zoom ID. Arnie is here for record permission. And if you have a question, as always, use the virtual raised hand button here on Zoom. Well, as you know, the 2024 NTT IndyCar Series season begins this weekend in the streets of St. Petersburg for the annual Firestone Grand Prix of St. Petersburg presented by RP Funding. Air McLaren just moments ago announcing their driver for the number six NTT Data Chevrolet this weekend as Callum Eilat makes his return to the series. This Sunday will mark Callum's 37th career NTT IndyCar Series start and a return to the streets of St. Pete where he finished fifth last year after starting 22nd. And Callum, thanks for hopping on with us uh, quickly after the announcement here today. Your, Your thoughts about returning to St. Pete. Uh, now drive the number six Chevrolet for Aero McLaren. Thank you for for having me, and uh, it's great to be back. It's great to be back in the NTT series um, and getting on with it with the number six Aero McLaren Chevrolet. So uh, really excited. Um, it's a great race to to come in for. First off, I uh, feel really bad for David. I hope he gets a speedy recovery and get back in the car soon. I think he's coming to the to the race, so we'll get to work together and um, get him up to speed with the team as quick as possible. And also for me as well, I need to get up to speed. Uh, but yeah, really grateful for the opportunity. So thanks to Zach, Gavin, Tony, uh, the whole team and NTT Data for letting me in the car. So it's going to be exciting. Also got to give a thanks to Hertz Team Jota for allowing me to do this race. So I'm I'm very pumped to get going and uh, give this orange car a go. Or papaya. Yeah, the, yeah, the papaya yeah. already looks good, though. I, you know, you, you ease right into that. Uh, obviously, one more before we open it up for questions. You know, uh, just returning from the World Endurance Championship, finished second, so quick flight, quick turnaround, different machinery. Uh, is your head spinning right now, or do you think you'll settle right in once we get going to, to St. Pete? Don't know what continent I'm on, what time zone, but I'm ready to go as always. So, no, I've, I've, yeah, we had a great race. Um, finished second, yeah, solid weekend in, in the World Endurance Championship. So, that was a great start to the year. Really enjoyed it and got on a plane, uh, stopped off in the UK, collected some stuff, and flew straight on to, to Indy where I am now. I'm in the shop. Uh, getting some last minute prep, took some photos for you guys this morning, and uh, off we go. Well, we appreciate that. We love the Callum Eilat smile you always give us. Uh, let's <laughs> let's go ahead and open it up for questions again. If you have one, use the virtual raised hand function here on Zoom. We'll begin with Joey Barnes from motorsport.com. Hey, Joey. Hey, thanks, Dave. Hey, Callum. Um, so I'm just kind of curious because, you know, I mean, we all know that with IndyCar, it's roughly somewhat of a spec series uh, for the most part, but there is a difference in, in team size and, and personnel, et cetera. So with that, that experience at Yunkos coming into to this opportunity, I, I guess, where's the headspace in relation to that? Like, where do you look at, at how big of an opportunity this is maybe compared to what you had the past two years, the equipment difference, et cetera? To be honest, it's a bit of a discovery process because obviously I did the hybrid test, but I've only been in the shop for one or two days now. Um, so yeah, the 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 size of the team obviously is larger and um, more more years of experience within the series. But I ha- I can't really comment on that until doing the race weekend and uh, experiencing it on that side of the, of a full scale. Um, so yeah, obviously it's great. The preparation is, is good, even though I've kind of had to, um, be, uh, in Qatar and full focus on that, but now is obviously full focus on St. Pete. So yeah, that's increasing and ramping up and, uh, I'm, I'm excited to, to see what the full scale of the operation is. Well, I I guess the follow-up to that, and this is probably the last one is just, when you're still kind of in that, as you say, discovery process of kind of learning some of those integral parts of the team, do you have personal expectations this weekend that might be uh, different than what you might have had in years past? Because as we know, like a top five in a Yunkos car is going to be an, a, a mega run. I mean, what are you kind of looking at with the scope of this opportunity? Uh, it's a brand new year for, for everyone. So of course you don't know exactly where to start off, but in, in the history of Aaron McLaren, they've always been very, very strong. And St. Pete last year was also very strong. So yeah, I think there's, there's 
all the opportunity to do a good job but my focus at the end of the day is is filling in and doing a solid job and uh leaving the weekend with no complaints so if i can be fast and up there great if i can finish the race and get some good points for them that's that's also the goal so yeah Ed, let's see where it goes into fp1 qualifying and then the race awesome well best of luck this weekend man thank you very much Thanks, Joey. Uh, let's go to Archie O'Reilly, Dive Bar Motorsports. Archie, go ahead with Callum. Hi, Callum. Uh, congrats on uh, the, the last weekend, first of all, and then the announcement today as well. I think, first of all, just how important is it to you as an opportunity to really prove yourself that you, you can fit in at a top team, this opportunity? And I guess how important is it as well to just validate the work that you've done at Huncos as well and prove that it was a really, really high level you were showing there? Yeah, I mean, that that's, I think it kind of goes without saying that every racing driver wants to prove what they can do. And this is a perfect opportunity to do it. Um, and the the test at Homestead went really well. And so far gearing up to this weekend, it's it's all going very smoothly. So I fit in quite well in the in a last minute um, situation. Uh, again, um, you know, I wish David all the best and and gets to be in the car as soon as possible. But I'll try and do the best job that I can within that time. Um, yeah, it's 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 obviously a an interesting place to be and an interesting place to see what I can do. Um, but again, I can't really comment until I and um, until I get on there. But that, that's that's the goal, right? To do as well as possible. Yeah, and and I know a couple of months back you told us that you were going to try and be around the paddock a bit. Have you got any more inkling as to whether there will be opportunities later in the year beyond this this chance here to deputise at McLaren, or is it still a case of kind of seeing what comes up? So well, like... I think the plan of being around and maybe jumping in a car. But came sooner than expected um so obviously that that kind of uh don't want to say wish but but idea has has come early um so yeah i'll, I'll see what happens I, i'm obviously quite busy with the world endurance championship um throughout the year but uh if i can make some races uh see what happens but i'm i'm around and uh i'll be i'll be looking looking about for sure thanks a lot Colin. nice to meet you again cheers dave you got it. Thanks for joining us, Eric Smith, IndyCar.com. Go ahead, Eric. Yeah, thanks, Dave. Congrats, Callum, on this uh, announcement today. Um, just a couple questions for you. Um, obviously, the MTT IndyCar Series, everybody gets this levels fast. They're talented race car drivers. So I'm just curious, from the race car driver's perspective, what are some of the intangibles that a driver can show the team that maybe isn't reflective on the speed chart or race results of – something maybe you can do behind the scenes that maybe us um, to the outside world aren't aware of. Uh, yeah. I mean, I mean, results are obviously a very global quick look at what amount of effort goes in um, to the world of sports and motorsports. Um, and that's the thing that at, at the end of the day, everyone wants to see. Um I mean, if if I look in hindsight, at my, or not in hindsight, but if I look at back at my career in IndyCar, it was it was spent in a single car team, which moved to a dual car team, and we we got some amazing results um, in that in that environment and built something up from the ground. Uh, sometimes that gets overlooked um, because you know at the end of the day, results is is the most important thing, but um yeah i think i think that kind of work you you know how much effort you you put in to to get that environment to the place that it is um but overall yeah i mean everyone everyone is working super hard in in every environment that they're in so i, I can't say that what i do or did personally is any more or any less than anyone else but um yeah i i know i know the efforts that that I've put in in different places and I think you know this is one of those little well quite a big rewards uh to get to to get to fill in for and what is kind of the mindset confidence levels I guess going into a ride obviously this isn't a full-time seat for you so you you can't not be aggressive in a series as tight as the IndyCar series we also I'm sure you don't want to go out there and make any enemies because this could be audition for the entire paddock so how do you balance that behind the wheel uh this coming weekend I think in terms of the the friends, enemies type of thing, I've done 
two and a half years almost in this in this series and people know what I am so I I think in in terms of one race I'm not gonna create any problems on that side um but looking at it yeah I've I've my my full-term commitment this year is is in WEC and that's where um my my full mind is and I'm enjoying that a lot so far we had a great start to the year so in my books I've already checked off a podium um on that side and uh yeah I'm just looking forward to keeping the momentum and the the speed uh with with these guys here Aaron McLaren and my final one obviously said it's kind of a a discovery process this weekend but you know race rhythm is a thing and you just raced last weekend as you mentioned you got a podium you finished fifth there last year mclaren's got good cars on street courses do you feel like i know it's hard to say you haven't been inside a, a race conditions yet in this car but what is the immediate goal i mean do you feel a podium top five is, is something that's achievable this weekend um do you feel like you can use last weekend granted it's a sports car not an indy car but you've already been in race with rhythm um, is that something you can use to your advantage this weekend? Yeah, I, honestly, I'm in a I'm in a very good space this year. I've I've had a great off season, um, and actually, a kind of even though it's been a bit a bit crazy the last couple of weeks, a great build up to uh, to my weekend in Qatar. I think in looking at it, the test at Homestead helped me a lot to uh, get the ball rolling actually in Qatar, and I think vice versa coming from there i had six out of seven days on track uh or maybe five out of six five out of six days on track coming here to uh uh to saint pete i think i'll be ready to go in terms of results it's it's very difficult to say yes i've i've was competitive there last year in the race um and you'd hope that that would continue and that's that's the goal uh in terms of the extent of that i don't know we've got to we've got to see i'm really again like i said on the discovery side there's a lot to to learn and know and i think a few questions will be answered by the end of the weekend sure cool thanks Callum. appreciate your time good luck this weekend thank you very much thanks eric nate ryan nbc sports go ahead nate Thanks, Dave. Hey, uh, congrats, Callum. Uh, the release from the team says it, it's only specific to St. Pete. So have you been told or have you had any discussions about this going beyond St. Pete if David remains out for, say, Thermal? Look, I think it all depends on on David. Obviously, you know, he's got to, uh, I guess, work, you, you can't really work uh, to, to get better, but you've got to be in the, the position to get better. So I hope he recovers as quickly as possible. Um, I am available for thermal, but again, that's a, a later point whether we'll know if that's the the case or not. Um, so we'll see what happens with with David and the team, and uh, yeah, for the future. Okay. Uh, the initial release when Malukas was hurt indicated he could be back like right before Long Beach. But I've noticed the WEC schedule has quite a gap past that. <laughs> um, so would that be? I mean, I I know this is speculative, but. If this goes well this weekend, are you thinking that as long as David is out, you could be Aaron McLaren's guy in this car? Um, I don't want to say it uh, at all like that. I think WEC is is the priority for me, and and it will be for uh, for the near future. Um, of course, if I'm available and what's needed is 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 me for example then of course i'm 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 open to doing it but um yeah we'll have to we'll have to see what what happens on that side but you know i pray for david that that's not the case because you want to be in the car and you want to work with your team um and yeah i hope that that he is in the car very soon because it's very tough i i can understand even even for me the one race that i did out the car after the 500 in 2022 it's it's tough to to sit and watch so I don't really wish that on anyone. It's it's especially with a new team. It's it's very tough. So I do feel for for David and again want him to be in the car as soon as possible. Sure, absolutely. Uh, presuming he is back for Long Beach, but if this goes really well this weekend, and maybe you some, turn some heads. I know you said you're committed to WEC this year, but beyond that, if there are gaps in the schedule and you get approached by any car teams, are you treating it as you're kind of a, available for hire as needed? Yeah, of course, it's all up for discussion, right? Um, I can't. Uh, there, there's a limit to to what you can do in terms of of travel. Of course, everything has fit in quite well. I had to miss the Sebring test 
um for for the WEC stuff but in the end uh, the WEC the WEC race was quite good so I think I made the right decision on that side to to oh and we, we had the prologue moved as well so it wouldn't have happened anyway um but yeah of course if if there is availability and and communication goes that way there's there's no reason to say no and then last one for me I mean you just mentioned it I mean the WEC opener obviously went outstanding for you and your team and I know you were I think you were fastest in one of the prologue sessions as well I mean how much I know it's a different discipline, but how much confidence did that give you to to be back on the podium to be fastest in practice in a in a practice session coming back here to IndyCar? I mean, I, we all know that you know you've shown you can contend in IndyCar, but but coming off of that great WEC showing, does that give you a lot more confidence coming into St. Pete? Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's been a few years. I said on an Instagram post that I haven't been on the podium, um, and I know that that is that was always possible, and. Um, yeah, I think the prologue, we came out of that P2, um, qualifying in Hyperpole P3 and P3, and then the race P2, splitting the Penske's. Yeah, it was a very impressive first race. I mean, the team did an amazing job um, and was was very competitive. I think, you know, we wish we could have got a little bit more out of there because P1 is is always something that you, you want to get. But I think it was the first hypercar podium that, that we'd, we'd achieved as a team and... Yeah, I'm I'm really looking forward to carry the momentum and it's been refreshing. It's nice to nice to go into an environment and hit the ground running. And it's also an environment that I kind of grew up in a little bit, uh, a little bit more. So I'm I'm hoping to bring that momentum here and see what I can do. Great. Thanks, Colin. Good luck this weekend. Thanks, Dave. Thank you. You got it, Nate. Ben Johnson, stand by. Let's go, Tim Harani, uh, up in Canada, TSN. Go ahead, Tim. Thanks so much, Dave. Really appreciate it. Congrats, uh, Callum. Just was curious to know how this kind of all came about. Did did Zach reach out to you, or was it Gavin? Um, I think it was a bit more mutual in that sense. So obviously, I saw the news. Uh, I was actually coming out to Indy anyway for for some more admin um, apartment stuff, uh, and then I was going to drop away quickly um, or sooner than I expected. And then I think a day or two later, uh, the seat fit was was happening. And then I think we were kind of like moving step by step on that side. There were some some things and logistics that that needed to be sorted out, obviously, as it's not an easy one to to deal with last minute, especially as I'm no now no longer in the US uh, full time. Um, and it, to be honest, uh, I think it was with Tony that the, the first contact was, was made, but yeah, I, I, I reached out and, and it was kind of like, let's see what we can do and how we can make this work. And, uh, I guess, uh, I'm assuming you, I'm pretty sure you got to do the test a few like last week it was okay. And, uh, how, how did you feel after that? Yeah, no, it was good. It was great to be back in a car. I mean, it's been two or three months since I'd. Yes, driven, physically. I think. Sorry, physically. How did it feel? How did you feel? <laughs> yeah, it was. It was good. It, honestly, I did. I think like 139 laps. Then got straight in a plane to to the UK. Stopped off. Got my helmet for the wet stuff and flew to Qatar. So, pretty pretty busy. But um, yeah, I I I felt good straight on the pace. So it was like I'd kind of never jumped out and. Uh, I've been driving constantly since, so I should be ready for St. Pete. No issues. Thanks very much for your time, Callum. Really appreciate it. Have fun this weekend. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Arnie. Okay. Thanks, Tim. So, Callum, do you still have your apartment in Indianapolis or no? I, I, I do. Uh, I, I kind of extended it two weeks before I kind of knew my fate at the end of last year. So, I, I it cost me a bit more to get rid of it early. So, it's actually quite convenient because I get to use it now. Oh, see, well, there you go. It 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 all makes sense then. Call that uh, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, uh, Ben Johnston, go ahead with Callum Eilat. Cheers, Dave. Hey, Callum, congratulations on today's news. It's great. Um, having worked with the team, like albeit very briefly, um, how beneficial is that to you going to St. Pete, knowing that you like that it's not completely brand new for you this weekend. Yeah, it's, it was really important to do the test, um, even though, yeah, I felt like I kind of hit the ground running. It's There's always stuff that you need to learn and how the environment works together. Um, and it is, you know, at the end of the day, it's such a competitive series. So any little edge you can get is is good. And yeah, it was it was 
really really worked out well in the timing of course again i would have loved to do uh, sebring as well um to to get some more info especially in the non-hybrid car but yeah it's it it worked out super well so I'm, I'm excited to get going and obviously they have a great history within indycar so it can only be easier with that i would say excellent thanks very much cheers dave thanks ben uh tommy t go ahead Hey, thank you so much, Dave. Uh, congratulations on this great opportunity. Have you had an opportunity to talk with Ryan Hunter about this uh, this opportunity? And if you have, uh, what kind of advice did he give you? Uh, no, I haven't. Um, no, I haven't been able to speak to him. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you. Good luck. Cool and sweet. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, love it. Uh, Edmund Jenks, go ahead with Cal Mylott. There we go. Uh, yeah. Hi, Callum. Callum. Uh, Callum. <laughs> um, yeah, it strikes me you were uh, like uh, the experienced person on the previous team you're at, and now you're going to be joining a paddock that's chuck full of uh, experience. Um, how do you feel that that's going to be, uh, you know, come St. Pete, uh, working with the people in the paddock, the t other drivers uh, that are easily uh, equal? Um, uh, what do you expect? Yeah, I think coming into to the environment, uh, Aaron McLaren is is going to be interesting for me. It's a, a lot to learn. It's it's a it's a bigger environment to what I was used to previously. Also, to be next to Alex and Pato is going to be going to be cool to to compare. I have a lot of respect for both of them. Uh, they're both very fast, so it's going to be going to be good there's going to be lots to learn um and hopefully my progress through through the weekend should should improve and um yeah hopefully i can join them for a good result and good points well you raced against these guys before you know a good solid season plus and um uh what what do you think you'll be uh marching into in terms of uh, learning more from them well Pato is known for for his speed, so that's always something that that you're going to be chasing and 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 trying to trying to find. Um, and Alex has a lot of experience within within the series, and is his race race craft and race pace is always very strong. So I hope to learn on the racing side before we come to the race, see what what little things I can find. But even afterwards, it's it's probably good to to compare and see see where you gain, where you lose, and. Um, even if it's before the weekend or after the weekend, there's there's a lot as a driver that you can bring with you for the future. Do you think you might get uh, softer elbows out on the track? Um, I, I well, well, we'll see. I, I, I to be fair, I I love the IndyCar racing. It's it's hard but fair. Um, and St. Pete is always one that that is where people get their elbows out. But at the end of the day, I proved last year that. Sometimes being a bit more uh, careful in situations brings you a better finish. Um, so we have to see. It depends on the situation. Well, uh, welcome back, at least for a short period of time. Uh, hope to see you more often, though. Good luck. Thank you very much. Thanks, Edmund. Uh, Joy, I know you got a, a follow up. Anyone else has a follow up? Let us know. We've got time for a couple more questions. Uh, Adam Tropper, Motorsports Today. Go ahead, Adam. Yep. Thanks, Dave. Uh, hi, Calum. Uh, congratulations on the uh, the podium at Qatar. Uh, so obviously, um, being a reserve driver, you're in a situation where it's essentially an audition for other part-time rides. Uh, do you see yourself uh, being able to secure any other part-time uh, gigs throughout the season, whether it's in the Indy 500 or anything else that may arise in 2024? Or is this solely for 2025 at this point in terms of looking for other deals? Uh to be honest, I'm not really thinking about it. Um, like I said, it kind of came a bit earlier than I expected. I, I did did think about turning up to St. Pete and then uh, the 500 and a couple of other little little ones um, and see what happened. But of course, yeah, I'm, I'm jumping in a car in the first race of the season uh, and a very competitive car as it is. So, yeah, I would say... After this, I don't know. I might take a little, uh, a little break as I've got some uh, wet stuff coming up, and then we gear up for Le Mans. Um, I think I can make the five hundred uh, as well. So, yeah, we have to see. I think in terms of a um, 
well, not not full time, but a for sure ride for the five hundred. It's it's gonna be tough. I think those filled up quite quickly. Um, so no, I'm I'm just just focusing on work and if I'm available for anything else that that seems convenient, or I might try some other other different cars uh, and range my experience within within the world of motorsports. Yeah, fair enough. And with that being said, uh, obviously you said earlier you're enjoying your time in the World Endurance Championship. So if IndyCar, if no opportunities arise, is your long-term goals like still to stay in the IndyCar series or would you be content with other endeavors? Just hypothetically. <laughs> I mean, I've already kind of, uh, how would I say? I took a step away from IndyCar uh, to, to go and do the World Endurance Championship. Um, and again, it's it's a professional series ride. I, to be honest, I just want to do what I enjoy. Um, and I enjoy it a lot. I enjoy IndyCar a lot um, and just have to see where that takes me. But I'm not forcing anything um, because it just it, it doesn't feel right. I'm kind of going with the flow. And again, um, the fact that I can make all of this happen and I think, so far start the year in a very nice way after after the end of last year it's it's great so i'm just going to continue that momentum and keep enjoying it and keep getting results in in everything i can do thank you that's awesome wishing you best of luck this weekend thank you very much okay again if you have a follow-up now is the time to let us know joey barnes i know you've got one go ahead joey yeah, thanks dave um uh, sorry to bug you about this callum um uh, but you know Obviously, you're missed because we keep bugging you about future opportunities and next year and everything like that. So uh, clearly, we want you around the paddock. But uh, I, I guess something that to touch on something that Nate was asking earlier, I guess I don't want to put the, the wagon before the horse, so to speak. But I mean, if you were to ballpark it, because you obviously have made it clear that WEC is the priority, that's the that's the program that you're putting the most emphasis on this year. Uh, and rightfully so. But if you could ballpark it, what do you think is maybe a comfortable number of races that you'd be willing to do on the IndyCar side this year without sacrificing or feeling like you're sacrificing that program? Um, you know, I can't, I don't want to get in the way of anything. There's a lot of preparation um, up until Le Mans. Um, and I think we have some other tests maybe before Kota, um, later on in the year. Uh, of course, I'm, I'm, it's convenient that the series uh, only has seven or eight races, so it's not too strenuous on that side. It's just a lot of travel. Um, I think the calculation I did at the beginning of the year was the possibility to make 11 or 12 IndyCar races if, if, I had to. Um, of course, that's a lot of traveling for me to do. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to see what's what's convenient on that side. And there's a certain I, I do have like if I have to do 11, 12, uh, that's what I'll have to do. If I can manage with three, four, five, that's what I do as well. So I'm I'm just just playing it by ear. Uh, I don't think I expected to go uh, to St. Pete about a month ago um so now that's happening i can't i can't complain fair awesome well i appreciate it man and uh again best of luck thank you okay time for two more uh neil wooding from sky indycar go ahead neil hi callum uh good news for our us uh, uk viewers over here that we've got you on the grid it's been a good couple of days really with you and jack um i just wanted to talk there was obviously uh, aaron mclaren announced that there was going to be this strategic alliance with john Coss. Mm -hmm. back in the year were you already in like in discussions with mclaren back then yeah so when there was should we say some shifts in the market um obviously uh i had some contact with zach to see what was going on uh there was the understood um kind of development of a partnership between Honkos and at that point it seemed quite sensible to to keep things as it was um so I had that uh, communication established, which was why I think it was quite easy to get the ball rolling uh, to do St. Pete uh, a couple of weeks ago. Perfect. Well, good luck this weekend, mate. Thank you very much. Thanks, Neil. Good to hear your voice. Uh, we'll wrap it up. Eric Smith, IndyCar.com. Go ahead, Eric. 
Yeah, <clears throat> excuse me. Sorry, Colin, just to put a bow on it. Um, clearly, IndyCar feels home to you. I could tell. Smile expressions. You were for our for all your reserve driver. You stayed here. I remember a couple years ago in the media center over here. You talking about how this just felt right to you to to stay with Hunkos, and here you are back. Like, why do you keep wanting to come back to IndyCar? What kind of a softball question for you? But why? What about this series do you like so much that even with wet full time abilities over there, you you still want to come back? So, what about the NTT IndyCar series feels home for you? It makes you want to just keep coming back for more. I mean, you're putting a lot of plurals on there. This is the first <laughs> time I've had to come back. Um, no, I, I mean, to put it simply, I, I felt that um, maybe it was slightly premature uh, what happened end of last year. Um, you know, it's, it's life and you, you have to find the best situation for yourself and work with that. And to be fair, I'm very fortunate to be in a super competitive seat with Hertz Team Jota and hit the ground running on that and we're second in the championship and world endurance championship straight away, which is great. And then to get the ball rolling in the first weekend of, of IndyCar with Aaron McLaren. Um, I can't, I can't complain. Um, so it's, it's pretty exciting on that side. This opportunity just felt right. I think for, for me and I think for the team, it was very convenient to, to kind of get it working. Um, and I think we're we're in for a good, exciting weekend in St. Pete. From my side, yeah, again, but maybe it was premature. I, I obviously did try and stay in the Indi NTT IndyCar series um, for this year, and that I was kind of unsuccessful at uh, making that happen. Uh, and yeah, I, I very quickly found another seat, um, which just felt right in in the World Endurance Championship. Um, so. I think in some ways it's it's a shame that I, I didn't quite make a full-time ride work. Uh, if if things had have happened maybe a bit earlier, I wouldn't have had a problem. Um, but again, I, I made something work that I, I can't complain about at all and I'm super happy to do. So it's it's a good place. And again, like I said, I, I can't have wished for more at the moment. I'm getting to do some exciting things this year. I guess more so, I meant like more like competition. Um, I is there just something about the competition levels of the NTT IndyCar series that just just brings the best out of you, brings the most out of a, a race car driver that you, it's hard to find and replicate that other where, or other areas of the world? Is it competition wise? Is is it just something that just suits you that you, you just want more of per se? Ah, uh, I mean, it, it, yes, it suits me. I think the if I if I'm gonna summarize it, I think it's been a tough two and a half years to really show what I want to show. I've showed potential in a lot of areas, but hasn't quite paid off in the way that I wanted it to. Um, so I think there's something about that that keeps making me want to come in and just go like, I, you know, this is what I've been talking about. Um, and hopefully uh, that can happen sooner rather than later. But as soon as I, I yes, of course the, the the championship is super competitive and and there's there's a lot of variability and um the range of tracks that we go to uh as a series is is um tough to to stay on top of. But yeah, I think as soon as I uh, as soon as I move move away, I seem to to get the ball rolling again and get some results and I come back here and uh yeah, I want to keep proving what what I can show in my history of racing. Perfect. Exactly what I meant. Thank you. Appreciate your time. No problem. Well, without any uh, more hands raised, we'll go ahead and leave it there for now. Callum, again, thank you so much for your time here today. No problem at all. Thank you for having me back. You got it. Uh, it's great to see you again. Look forward to seeing you in St. Pete. And a reminder, uh, the video from this news conference, along with transcripts, will be available on the IndyCar content site within the next uh, 45 minutes to an hour or so. Uh, the Firestone Grand Prix of St. Petersburg, Sunday coverage begins at noon Eastern on NBC, Peacock, and the Spanish language version also available on Universo. Thanks, everyone. Have a great rest of your week. Thank you. Have a good week. Bye-bye.